on guys in this video we are going to be working on the Arkeaton Knight. I want to give a special shout out to Unofficial Cargo for giving me the idea for that name. And if you guys haven't already figured it out, our Keaton Knight is a hybrid of the Batman Arkham Knight and Michael Keaton's version of Batman. And as you can tell behind me, I've already got it somewhat put together. Yeah, I hope you guys dig the video. Alright, so I'm going to start off with the abdominal piece. I'm using some 6mm craft foam from TNT Cosplay Supply. I already drew on my designs and I scored it with a razor blade. I only went halfway through. Now I'm applying some heat so I can start forming the muscles. You want to be careful when you do this and not cut all the way through the foam because it would be really bad because that's a pretty big piece of foam. I'm using a butt end of a mic stand and it's really short mic stand. It actually works pretty good and you could probably use something similar to this. Now I'm rolling my muscle accents back and forth making sure that I don't shrink the other muscles when I'm doing the new muscle pieces and I just go back and forth applying heat and rolling on new muscles and eventually it starts to look pretty awesome. What do you think? I think it's looking really cool. I really like using this technique. It could be pretty complicated if you're first starting off, but just, you know, stick with it and eventually it'll start coming out looking really cool like this. Now that I have all my muscles cut out and formed, it's time to fill in these gaps with some low temperature hot glue. I like using low temperature hot glue for this because it hardens up a lot quicker than high temp hot glue and yeah I don't have time to wait for high temp hot glue to cool down so once you get it all in the crack you can start to tell that the definition of each muscles are starting to be a little more defined and it looks crappy on this side but on this side that's the side that matters now here are the pieces for my chest piece now the upper chest piece, I did cut the bottom line in an inward angle and the lower piece of the chest piece is actually cut and straight. But when you glue them together, it starts to take its form and it looks like this and it looks pretty good and I haven't even applied any heat. Imagine once you start to heat form it, it starts to look really sick. Now I'm going to apply some glue on the uh, top piece or top lip of the abdominal piece and then apply some glue to the lower tip of the chest piece and I glued it on just like that. Maybe I should have tried gluing it on kind of like directly instead of underneath but I went ahead and did this anyways. I'm not sure how I feel about it but it's looking pretty good anyway so why not roll with it. Speaking of rolling, I'm rolling a ball underneath the chest piece so I can get some more definition to the muscles on the chest. Then I went and installed some strap thingies to the sides and for the trap shoulder areas. And these pieces will eventually connect to the back plate, which is this. Really simple because I'm going to throw a cape over it and it doesn't need to be all blinged out. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm pretty much using 6mm EVA foam on the majority of all these pieces. And I'm just using the 8mm foam for the chest and of course the shin guards and some of the um, pieces that I think requires a little bit of thickness. But as for all the other pieces that require some flexing and moving around, I use a thinner foam. And right here I am installing some neck guards. Not sure if I'm really going to need it, but then again I'm not even sure where I'm going to go with as far as the cow goes, so I'm just going to put it on there. Now I'm trimming off the excess material on the abdominal piece, which I'm going to eventually round off with the Dremel, and then I'm putting on my Arkham Knight emblem. And for accents, I like to use 2mm, maybe 3 but not too thick because I don't want accents to really stick out. Now let's move along to the arms. These are the pieces for my shoulder pauldrons. I cut all the pieces that are going to join together in an inward angle and this piece I did some v-groove undercuts. I applied my contact cement where I felt like I'm going to need them and then I'm going to carefully place all the pieces together using the surface of my table to make sure that the pieces all lined up nice and neatly just like that. Then I'm going to take this piece and then I'm going to glue the v-groove undercuts together and then just attach it underneath the shoulder pauldron and it should look something like this. Then I went in and added some velcros on the inside underneath 
and some velcro sewn onto some elastic now when I'm gluing these straps together I like to use high temperature hot glue because things hold a lot better now I'm working on the bicep guards I'm doing some undercuts and I'm going to roll some muscles in there with some heat and this magic ball that I have just kind of laying around and once I get all my muscles formed I'm going to fill in the gaps with some low temperature hot glue so far so groovy right I'm going to take my wood burner with the spatula tip and I'm going to cut in some slots and I'm going to stick some elastic in there I'm going to hot glue that down from underneath so that it'll look pretty clean now be careful don't burn yourself I like to use a tongue depressor to press everything down sometimes I like to be dangerous and use my own finger to see how hot it is which isn't very smart as for the gauntlets or bracers whatever you want to call it I'm going to use this zipper technique that I used on my previous build I really like how it looks really clean now the elastic stuff works just as good I think it's more comfortable to wear with the elastic whereas the zipper can't really flex too much now I'm going to glue all my pieces together and then once I'm done with that I'm going to carefully align the zipper making sure that the zipper is going the right direction because you want to make sure you're able to slip your hands in there because what's the point if you can't wear your bracers right and you want to make sure you don't glue your zippers together because that would be very smart not really now so far the gauntlet is looking pretty cool but not Arkham Knight cool. I need to work on some accents and here are the pieces for my Arkham Knight accents. I'm cutting this in an inward angle when I flip it over then it's going the right direction. And then I'm going to do some V-groove undercuts from the inside which is the underneath. Peel all that off, apply some contact cement and when I glue it all together it's going to give this really nice cool bevel look. And here are the or some additional accents that's going to go like right over the wrist and I also did some big groove undercuts for that too as for these accents I used eight millimeters and then for the smaller accents like this I went and used five millimeter craft foam I went and applied all my contact cement waited about five to ten minutes once it's all dried to attack time to glue it all together and here is this funky little thingy right here which is more awesomeness added to this gauntlet thingy yeah and when you cut your V grooves you want to make sure you don't cut all the way through I usually cut one side straight and the other side in an angle and uh, glue it all down it should look beveled like this I went and apply some heat so I can add some curvatures before I glue them all together and once you glue them all together you should go on something like that yeah so far it's looking pretty sick and I'm really digging it. Now I'm going to apply some glue to my um, arm cover so I can glue the axis to it. I didn't apply too much glue because what if I messed up and I needed to take it apart? Well, if you glued it all down, it was crooked. You'd be stuck with crooked gauntlets. And if you're like me and you're not a perfectionist, then it won't bother you that much. Just carry on but I do have high standards and I do pay attention to details I just don't spend a whole lot of time trying to get things perfect now I'm carefully aligning all my accents on there and it's looking pretty groovy but it's gonna give it more groovier whenever I take my spatula hot burner and start burning in some additional details as you can tell I went from awesome to way freaking awesome and to think I haven't even painted it yet and at the weathering now here are the pieces for my thigh guards. I went and did something a little different, but I didn't make it all so awesome-ish. Kind of left it really plain and simple because why not? Sometimes it looks better really clean, you know what I mean? Now I'm totally going to contradict my last statement by making my shin guards super awesome. I cut the center piece in an angle and wherever they're going to connect, I cut it in an inward angle and I'm going to carefully align everything together and make sure that my shin guards are nice and clean. Look at how perfectly my lines are and I'm not even a perfectionist. I just like making things perfect. Not really. Here are the accents for my shin guards. I should call these headaches because that's what they were. Cutting every piece out like that. Man. So I applied my contact cement to all my pieces. I'm using this 5mm craft foam so I can glue the pieces together staggeredly-ish, I guess. 
that's how you would say it? I don't know. But yeah, she looked like a set of stairs or steps. Just like that. Now I did cut where these pieces are going to connect in an inward angle so that way when I glue all these pieces together they can wrap around the shin guards really nice and cool almost. Now these accents are starting to look like what I had in my mind I guess and I glued this piece there so I can space it away from the rest of the shin guards and it had this additional really cool look to it and so far this is what my shin guards are looking like now we're moving along to the boot covers if you're wearing boots then you don't need to make boot covers because duh but then again why am I calling them boot covers if I'm not covering boots with them let's just call them artificial boot covers yeah, and I went ahead and made two of these artificial boot covers unless you got three legs and that would be amazingly weird Here are the pieces for my shoe guard or shoe lace guard. I did some v-groove undercuts and Glued it together looking something like this now I'm going to put some velcros underneath it so that way I can lay some velcros in my shoelace of the boot and it's just stick together like that now I'm taking my wood burner and throwing in some lines to give it some additional awesomeness details something like that seems legit to me I don't know what do you think now as far as painting goes I went and skipped the Mod Podge and went straight to Plasti Dip and I laid down a couple of coats on everything and so far it's looking pretty sick I may not even paint the whole entire armor I don't know yet but I am going to paint some of these metal accents or metal parts like the gauntlets and the shin guards with this gunmetal gray now I took a few coats of this gunmetal gray to cover the black I personally think that the black base coat with gray gunmetal paint actually worked pretty well I only applied the gray gunmetal paint to the shin guards, the gauntlet and the shoulder pads those parts are actually the metal of this armor and then I went in and did some black shadings around the edges of each pieces that were painted gunmetal. As you can see, the difference between the shaded and the non-shaded added a little bit of contrast. I really dig it. Now as for the bat emblem, I went and painted that bronze. I plan on painting the belt bronze and the fin on the gauntlet bronze. And you're probably wondering why I went with bronze. Well, I wanted to go with the classic Keaton color scheme, but minus the yellow. I wanted to do a more modern Batman look, and I went with bronze, because why not? And then I went back and weathered all the pieces that I painted gunmetal. I even did the shoe cover. So yeah, so far this is where I'm at with my R. Keaton Knight armor. Hope you guys are really digging it. Now I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do with the cow just yet, but I'll let you guys know. And you guys want to stay around for that. What do you guys think about the armor so far? I dig it. I'm so digging it. Alright guys, I hope you guys dig the video. I hope you guys learned something. And if you guys want to build the Arcade Knight, the templates will be available. Make sure you guys check the links in the description below. I'm going to be making the uh, actual Arkham Knight chest plate or the body. Be on the lookout for that. But I just wanted to make the uh, Arkham Knight. I wanted to make my own version of Batman Arkham Knight. And yeah, so far I'm really digging it. I've already made a uh, Batman Arkham Knight. It's actually one of my very first video tutorials that I put out two years ago. My skills has progressed greatly if you guys have been following me for the last couple years. And yes, I've been doing this for two years now. I also got Batgirl coming along pretty well and hopefully I can have a video on that real soon. Um, if you guys like what I do, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already subscribed because I got a bunch of other cool stuff coming. Follow me on my Instagram if you want to check out more pictures because I like to drop teasers and my progress pictures along the way. Sometimes you guys will see progress pictures months before I actually make videos on them. So yeah, make sure you guys go and follow me on my Instagram or like me on Facebook. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it for this video. Yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.